You yeah. know, so you have this virus, you know, which is which is not particularly lethal, and then you literally force everyone to get a vaccine against it. I mean, that's actually insane. Hmm. You know, kind of now we say it, it's insane, but that was the conventional wisdom at the time. And so, what, I mean, you make the point about, uh, you know, there weren't many that followed followed the, the, the actual numbers and the, and the reality of it, but you did. What, what's, your, what's your thesis on that? Like, why is it that when you turned on, you know, the evening news or you, you know, opened most newspapers or whatever, uh, or even talked to people on the street, what, you know, what's your perception of why there weren't more, in particular, journalists that were prepared to go out on a limb like you were yeah, or tell well, the truth, think, I suppose? Mate, you know, I mean, I don't want to be too mean to, to, to my colleagues, but I think a lot of them, frankly, didn't didn't read much around the virus and they just they just watched mainstream media and they just took that as, you know, as gospel, you know, whatever CNN was saying effectively, you know, whatever the, you know, whatever governments were telling mainstream media, which was then just immediately regurgitated by, by journalists, they just took that as, as, as you know, as the truth. Um, so, you know, the... There's also a great reluctance to to stand out. I think you know in um, you know in journalism it can be very dangerous. And indeed, I got you know death threats and all sorts of things during that period. It was really unpleasant. Um, you know, my parents were worried about me. I remember having calls with mum and dad about it. And you know, my brother was a high school teacher. He got abused when you know someone found out that he was my brother. You know, I mean, it was it was really awful. I mean, you know, we forget how dark that March mm. April 2020 period was, and just the sheer insanity that descended on society. And you know what? And, and the most extraordinary thing is, to me even now, and I, I kind of I reflect on it quite often actually, <laughs> is that is that you have people thinking that they're living through this extraordinary pandemic, this great historic plague, and yet they don't know anyone who's died from it. Like they absolutely know no one. So so you know, these these two ideas are completely disconnected, right? Like it's it's insane actually. And indeed, when I first came to the US in April twenty one. You know, that was kind of peak insanity still. And the perception from Australia was that, you know, that everyone was dying in the US and there were bodies everywhere and the hospitals were filled. And, and you know, so when I came to Washington, D.C., you know, I made a point of asking Americans, so, you know, how many people do you know who've died from COVID? And basically, no one knew anyone, <laughs> right? So it was the same here. Like the actual proportions dying were extremely small and those who were dying were dying in nursing homes. So, so they're, you know, kind of far removed from you know, from mainstream society. So, you know, it was, it was, it was just, it was just crazy. And indeed I had emails from News Corp asking me if I was okay. <laughs> it's kind of like, and I'm not singling out News Corp. All companies were doing this, right? This yeah. is, this kind of madness descended on society when this, this flu, this, God, it wasn't even the flu. I mean, I was talking to my brother recently who actually had the flu and he was, you know, he almost went to hospital and that was just standard flu. Yeah. But, you know, he, but, you know, he had COVID twice and it was nothing. So we just, you know, we just panicked over, I've had COVID twice and, you know, yeah. both times, okay, it's a bit annoying, but, you know, it's just like getting a cold. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, it's actually quite interesting to break all that down, how, how it's all panned out, but I'm interested in that. I mean, you really did. Yeah, sorry I rant about it, sorry, because as you can see, I'm still angry about it. <laughs> well, you and me both. I mean, I, I get accused of going on about it too much, but it's one of these <laughs> things that I don't think we've unpicked. I mean, you know, there are a group of us here in, uh, you know, in, in Australia, in, in Canberra, when we're there pushing for a royal commission, a proper royal commission, not some open and shut inquiry. And, of course, there's, you know, there's very little political will at the moment to do that. But how could there not be? I mean, this was, you know, we spent, what, half a trillion dollars we we locked down homes we you know we, we went off on this you know sort of you know, you know therapy frolic that that no one had ever done before and yet we're being told we don't need to look into it anymore i think it's perfectly understandable that people are still talking about it frankly i think we're not talking about it enough 